Hi and welcome to our second devlog for Status 1. We are working hard and would like to share our progress with you this week. We really wanted to add automatic leg positioning system, so that when the character rotate, they don't look like the legs are floating. So we did some research and we liked how it was done in Project Zomboid, where the legs snap to specific angles. First, we had to slightly modify the character rig, because the waist was the main bone, so when it rotated, the whole character rotated also. We had few problems with calculating angles, but we managed to solve them. Anyone who has ever dealt with rotating in Unity for scripts probably knows what I'm talking about. In 2D, when you release the keyboard, the game looked like it was freezed. In the new version, we wanted to add some life to the environment and the characters. Now, when the characters are not doing anything, the animator will be notified to initiate the idle animation event. The animation can always be interrupted and does not block any functions. For now, there are only 3 animations for each weapon, but we plan to increase this number to around 10 for better variety. And speaking of animations, I can tell you how it all works from the backend. We use animation layers that we divided into lower body, upper body and whole body. We defined a humanoid animation avatar, allowing us to animate the legs and body separately. We recently added the whole body layer to override everything in case of more complex animations, such as this one with the cigarette. We did some research on how weapon recoil works in real life and that stuff, and changed the shooting animation accordingly. The shooting animation with the recoil looks good on the pistol, but with the automatic weapons the character looked like it has a seizure, so we removed the recoil from the shooting animation and overwritten the back position in the whole body layer. This allowed the character to be gradually pulled back when firing a full auto and return to their original position after shooting. We also redesigned the UI, specifically the panel with your allies. In the old project it looked empty. And after Ally died, the panel was useless and only blocked the visibility. We moved the panel from the top to the right to improve it. Now the panel shows you what weapon the allies are using and what gear do they have. Additionally, we improve everything with Lintwin, so after Ally death, their panels disappear with smooth animation to not obstruct the screen. To improve the environment we added bullet holes, and to create this we used decals that allows flat graphics to fit onto 3D objects. It can be compared to an ordinary sticker that we stick on curved surfaces. However, it wasn't the best solution, because when bullet hit wall at steep angle, the hole didn't look good. So we wrote the script that using 4 raycast and some math was able to determine the angle of the object the bullet hit, and pass it to the bullet hole which now can simply adjust to the surface it hits. In addition to the blood flows from bodies, we added blood splatter that appears when character is hit. This allows blood stains to appear on above, the ground and walls. To calculate where such a stain should appear, we use Raycast arranged in a parabolic pattern. For now, the blood splatter itself may not look good, but we plan to add various patterns depending on the distance it travels. To ensure the splatter doesn't look like static stain, we combine it with the VFX blood effect, making shooting much more satisfying. The doors are finally here, we decided to have them open in two directions for convenience and gameplay dynamics. It's worth saying that doors react to the environment and without any interaction we can close it by only pushing them. So that's all for now, if you enjoy, we invite you to our Twitter where you can find more screens from Status1. Bye!